Alright, it's a Scorpion TV. Here with an interview with Murder Ghost. What's up, man? What up, dude? Just kicking it right now, chilling, doing whatever, actually in the process of looking upon something to do tonight. <laughs> same here, same here. Maybe do some illegal activities, you know. How was your fourth? Excuse me? How was your fourth of July? Uh, well, pretty good. I don't remember a whole lot of it. Went over to a uh, homeboy's house and got drunk and smoked a little bit. Went all the way out. I live on the south side of, of town, so we went all the way out to the north side to get killed and uh, had a good fucking time, really. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. All right. No fireworks, though. All the money went toward alcohol and weed. But, hey, what's better than that, right? Yeah, you got it. Sounds like a good time. That's basically what I did last... Well, well yeah, the last line, yeah. Well, I got a few... Uh, during this, I got a little... I guess you could call it kind of a bombshell to drop, but... It is what it is. All right, let's get started, then. Um, the beef between me and you is squashed completely. No more... You know, yeah, but it originally even began just as, from my point of view, there's a misunderstanding between me and Knockout. And, you know, I know everybody's forgotten about Knockout, you know, but he, he he's still around. Uh, he's just been doing his own thing, really. I can't really discuss a whole lot about what he's doing, but uh, I think if anybody, you know, remembers him, he, he about to make a comeback. Oh, shout out to him. Good luck to him. Yeah, about to make a comeback. So who are, you, who are the producers for your mixtape or album that's coming uh, soon? Well, the first mixtape that was released, which was Crisis ENT Volume 1, uh, was originally supposed to feature uh, a few other artists, but internal issues in the group kept those people from uh, actually being involved. We released 300 CDs at uh, River Fest, which is like a big, like a town party, I guess you could say, in, in downtown Wichita. But uh, as far as that goes, uh, every the dude who produced everything was a uh, super freak. Everybody pretty much knows him at this point. He did all the mastering and uh, all the instrumentals for the CD. Uh, me and him together purchased uh, the CDs and you know the cases and whatever we needed and printed out 300. And you know, it was, uh, I wish it could have been a little more successful than it was, but it was just something to put our name out there. And, you know, 300 copies ain't bad. How, how much did you sell? You sell all of them? Uh, uh, no, actually, we didn't sell them. Uh, we just put the money for it to them, and instead of trying to make a profit on the uh, first street release CD, we just gave them away. We just came down to Riverfest with like eight or nine people and walked around and gave out CDs. Oh, cool. Got a few other local rappers that were down there giving out CDs, too, and we picked a couple of those up. But huh? Like I said, I wish it could have been a little more successful than it was, but hey, whatever gets your name out there. True, true, true. That's, the, that's one of the main ideas. Who will be fe who was the feature on that mixtape? Uh, on the on the first mixtape, it was uh, me and Super Freak were really the two main people on there. We also had a group that we're working with uh, called the Hellraisers, who are also from Wichita, from the Dub. So uh, we've been working with them on a lot of shit. Uh, they they do more of a kind of a rap rock kind of thing, which you know works for them. They just released a song called uh, Gnarly, which was uh, pretty good, and they featured uh, Young Main on uh, the song and I just recently released a song called You Must Be Crazy which um, I'm not trying to hate on nobody but it was really it really just flopped uh, but other than that they're working pretty good we was working with a cat named uh, Young Zay but he's just been off the radar for a minute nobody knows what really happened to him and as far as future mixtape plans and CDs go uh, again internal issues within the group and creative issues within the group are right at this time preventing me from recording anything new or even having any thoughts on a new CD. I was supposed to host a mixtape uh, here pretty soon. We were supposed to host one and then a Crisis ENT Volume 2. However, like I said before, due to internal issues in the group, I really don't know if that's going to happen again. Cool, cool. All right. All right what's so currently, I have, no, I'm, I have nowhere to uh, record or do anything of any sort like that. Oh, really? Shit. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to delve into the issue too much because, you know, it could be fixed in an hour for all I know. But <laughs> as of right now, I don't really have about as much information as anybody else does as far as what I'm doing. Okay. All right. Um, what's your what's what's the state of hip hop? What do you think of the state of hip hop? You know, like well, like with uh, what say uh, example what, what Jay Z did did the auto tune. You know, the auto-tune in, in hip-hop, um, hip-hop, oh, wow, hip-hop, 
Oof, this is a touchy subject. Um, Go ahead. Hip hop. Well, see, this is how I look at it. If you if you if you take it back to 1999 and further it to 05, we had what I like to call rap, and now we have what everybody else likes to call hip hop. I don't even fuck with the radio at this point. Um, and my honest opinion about it is, is that these people who are coming out, um, and I really don't care whose feelings I hurt, but th- there's this, and, and I'm gonna get a lot of haters for this. I'm gonna get a lot of haters for what I'm about to say, but I, I'm I'm just gonna stamp it that turn my swag on by soldier boy is the worst song ever released in any song genre ever ever flat out period uh the auto tune is killing hip-hop and jay-z seems to really be the only person trying to do anything about it and at this point in his career granted he's a rap legend but i don't think that he's gonna have enough support right now to kill it and like turn my swag on i mean rap went from from having such a lyrical skill and talent that it took a certain kind of person to be able to to perform at that level and now that we've got got like now that soldier boys come out anybody can do it anybody can get on their computer and download auto-tune and get on a track and auto-tune it and then that's it if you take a look back at all my songs um there are songs that crisis ent has done using autotune no song i'm I, i'm featured on has autotune in it at all i refuse to use it. Uh, it, it it went from lyrical talent to repetitive bullshit it's just repetitive bullshit most of the mainstream that's all it is now like turn my swag on i mean really what does he say in that whole song turn my swag on yeah i'm getting money that's all he says the whole song that's not that's not that's not rap rap was lyrical like when you had guys like Nas and like when 50 Cent first came out and he slayed the mixtape scene and you had cats like The Game who came out and then Papoose uh, people who were just killing it and now we've got these other guys who are just ruining it for everybody mm-hmm. it allows people who have no talent to come into the game and ruin it for everybody else Okay, okay, all right. Let's move on to the last question. Um, what is your view of Young Miss and the 502 Boys? Uh, as far as that goes, I really don't have a personal issue with them. However, when you, when you make a song and then you sit down and you listen to yourself on the song and it's not good, something needs to change. I actually contacted them over MySpace and uh, I was... I, th- I tried to, ha- I attempted to have a conversation with them to to kind of sway this away from, you know, this, this beef that y'all are having. I tried to kind of sway that direction off, and I basically got blown off. I said, I've been doing this for a while, and, you know, if you want some tips or whatever, I know you're fairly new. When I came out and I was fairly new, you know, I, I could have used somebody to help me, but, you know, that opportunity never really came around, and I tried to discuss it with them, and basically they told me, well, we got some new shit coming out that's a lot better, and we don't need your help, so... Really, my attempt to help them progress, I just basically got spit on for it. But, I mean, that's, you know, that's just what kind of happens when you try to help people who can't see beyond themselves. Well, I, I I tried to do the same thing, so I know I know the feeling. I mean, I thought you you would try to be the, you know, the peacemaker between us. Yeah. I mean, I just, I mean, if, 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 if in my position, when I was in their position, if somebody would have came to me and said, hey, I've noticed this and this and this about your track formats, or I've noticed this and this and this about your 16s, or you could you could wrap it this way and it'd be better, I mean, I would appreciate it that now that I've tried to help somebody else and got blown off, I really don't see myself in the future trying to do that for for anybody. Well, you mentioned the bombshell. What's your bombshell you're about to drop? My bombshell. My bombshell. Well... As far as everything goes, as Crisis ENT, um, I'm not going to say that I don't want to be a member of their group. I do. Uh, I've enjoyed what we have done together as a group. Uh, songs like What It Is, What It Do that have come out have done really, really well. Uh, in Wichita, a lot of people know that song. It's really picked up in the local area. And then we had songs like Untouchable and What Would You Do that were really good. And creative issues, again, within the group caused me to fall back a little bit and to the point where the the original people that I was working with I'm not really working with at this point I had some major plans uh I gotta be I released which was my single from the mixtape did did pretty well too and I had an I gotta be kind of part two coming out because the first time I killed it on a lyrical level and the second time I was gonna do it on a metaphorical level just to prove that I could swing it both ways nice. but I really don't know at this point 
what to do and I can't and I, I want to speak on the issue but I can't do it as far as because I don't want to damage the situation any further uh, just arguments here and there and a little situation that had happened one night kind of dissolved uh, what the original group was the original crisis ENT in my opinion doesn't even exist anymore this is Damn. this is something else we've, we've let a few new guys into the group who, who aren't bad they're, they're good you know I, I mean I'm not saying that anybody from crisis is a bad rapper I'm saying that there's room for improvement from people that are better and I'm sure that super freak isn't probably going to appreciate me saying that but I don't mean it in any kind of offensive way at all I hope that whatever issues are going on can get worked out and we can get back into the booth and and uh, keep doing what we're doing like we were before. But I, that's not a decision that's up to me. So right now, this, is, this interview is probably going to be the last time that anybody hears from me for a while. Oh, damn. All right, uh, give your shout-outs and then that will be it. All right, well... Man, I want to shout out, uh, I know that you and this person don't get along very well, but I want to shout out Apocalypse, you know, his mind frame and mind state is in, is in kind of the same place that I am. Uh, I want to shout out Debo, I want to shout out Little Michael, dudes we be kicking it with all the time, what's up to Miguel, fucking Shelby, congratulations on your new baby, man, and I gotta shout out my girl, I just gotta do it, I gotta do it. But, before this, in this interview ends, I gotta leave, I gotta leave with a statement. Um... Just, just to prove one more time, since I'm gonna be gone, and the first time that I left rap, I got shitted on by people while I was gone because I couldn't respond. So I'm just gonna leave Catch with this little, little, little 16 right here that I'm gonna do over the phone for you. And I've never spit it before on any other track. This is just some exclusive shit. It's probably never gonna go on the beat. But this is just one more way for me to prove that nobody in the Midwest is really gonna fuck with me. So let's just do it like this. It's like. AK spray sprays in an array of ways from far away. You start to say I spark away. You marks betray away the place so you can stay safe today. It's soft as clay. You're fucking gay. I'm bucking trades. You're fucked okay. Now's the verbs. It's pounding. It's turning. Rhymes are straight and yours is curves. I'm saying you're gay from what I've heard. You get chopped and stirred just like a bird. And I can curve. Will occur as fast as a blur as I kick and spurt. So. Nice, nice. Dudes can fuck with me. I mean, I just recently wrote a 16 that, uh, you know, normal 16 has 16 rhymes in it. This one had 52. So, and that was put on a track. However, when the track was released from Crisis EMT, the version that was released didn't have me on it. Oh, damn. For whatever reason. Damn. All right. Well, like I said, I hope the internal issues work out in a group, you know, and we can get back to doing this music shit like we were before. All right. Good luck to you, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. No problem, man. And then uh, we'll keep in touch. Yep, keep in touch, definitely. All right, this is Scorpion, yeah. and that was Murder Ghost. Yep. Right. 